Hey, I'm gonna do a little more gold mine today, and uh, today we're gonna do some dousing. And I might as well get out the tools of the trade here. This is gonna be what we're using today. Just a set of dowsing rods, basically bent cone hangers, but these are store bought. Um, I won them at some raffle auction near years ago. And uh, actually, the guy gave them to me after I. I went down to the, uh, there used to be a gold show in Auburn years ago, back in the day. And, uh, well, let's get on the road, and I'll tell you that story while we're, while we're driving. We're uh, just going to be doing, going and do some trail riding. i got to break across one from one property to the next, and we'll get back on some regular roads, so you might see a few trees and stuff hit the windshield. and That's all part of the fun of gold mining. <laughs> And this guy's out there, and he's trying to sell these dowsing rods. You know, and he's got this—he's got them set up where he put this gold nugget over a piece of pipe that's going across, you know, like a drainage pipe. And I could see the drainage pipe, and I could see right where he's putting his nuggets. So he went out there first and test shot this place and made sure that he found the uh, the spot where his rods are going to cross the longest, you know, or across the most, which is right over the top of that metal pipe that drain pipe down there at the uh, Auburn Fairgrounds. And there we got this way. Come on. Yeah, a little slide hilling. There we are. Broke through to the old road. More or less, we're not on the road yet. So. I go down there, and I and he's like giving this demonstration on his rods, and I'm like, "What's going to happen when you move the nugget out of there?" And he goes, "Oh, it won't read anything if the nugget's there." So I'm like, "Okay, we'll go ahead and move the nugget and try that." So he went ahead and moved his nugget out of there, and he gave me the rods, and you know I went across over the top of the nugget, and uh, well, yeah, that's the first thing I did was I went over the top of the cross of that nugget, and uh, of course the, the rods crossed right there. Right over the top of where he had that little, uh, it was a little vial. I can't remember how much was in there. Maybe a half ounce or something, you know. And uh, so I'm like, well, what's going to happen if we take them away or move them over here, you know? And so he took the nuggets away, and I went right back over the same spot where he had it over the pipe. And I'm like, I'll oh, be darn, look at that. They crossed again. What caused that? And he goes, Oh man, it was the memory of the gold being there. And I'm like, Yeah, right. And I go, you're right on top of a drain pipe. It's like a four inch pipe. You can tell just by what it is, because I've done it enough times over the years, finding broken water pipes and all kinds of, you know, water mains and stuff that uh, I have seriously done a lot of dousing and found, you know, water and I've found, uh, you know, metal pipes and that kind of stuff. But I've never actually found any gold. So we're gonna go out and see if we can find some gold today with these dousing rods. You know what I'm, you know, we'll see what happens. Either I'll get a good signal or I won't, but I'll show you how they work anyway. Works out good. So anyway, after I get done, I had this whole crowd of people around me because they're all watching me go all over the place with these dousing rods in my hand going, yeah, this is gold, this is iron, this is steel pipe, there's water in this pipe, and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, man, you know, you know, you're really good at what you're doing. And he ended up selling like 10 pairs right then, even though he was trying to sell it by lying. Um, you know, and putting those nuggets right over the pipe, I came in there and showed everybody that, yeah, everybody can douse pretty much, you know. And so uh, he gave me this pair. He's like, you know, he came up to me, I'm walking away saying thanks, you know, I was like, I wasn't going to pay 20 bucks for them or whatever, I can just get a coat hanger and do it for free, you know. So he walk up to me, you know, and there's all kinds of people around, you know, just looking at me, and they're all smiling. And you know, he's like, "Here, you go ahead and take these, man. That was a great presentation because I really did. I, I went through everything and the history and all that stuff of, because, uh, you know, well, let's go into the history a little bit. What's, what's the history of dowsing? How far back does it go? Well, you know, nobody knows. There's, I mean, no anybody that tries to tell you, oh yes, it was started in the 1500s, and you know, or Merlin the magician was, you know, doing the dowsing, and that's how he did all his tricks or whatever garbage they're trying to tell you. You know, they got pictures of people dousing that are, you know, ancient stone paintings from ancient man. 
Okay, it goes back, and nobody knows how far back they go. They don't. This is just how it is. It goes back forever. Man has this ingenuity, you know, and we have it built into us to, you know, we want to learn things. We want to learn about our sources. We want to learn about our planet. We want to learn about everything. And so it's built into us to discover these things, and we have these natural abilities. Some of us do, some of us don't. This is the thing. You're going to find a lot of skeptics out there. And the only reason they're skeptic is because they don't have the polarity in their bodies or whatever it is. I'm not going to pretend and say I know. But uh, they don't have the polarity, you know, to make them work. And they just flat out don't work for them. I'm going to go ahead and put my mirrors back out just uh, for fun here. Check this out. It's one thing I like about this car. You just push the button and the mirrors go in and out on their own. <laughs> it makes it nice, you know, when you're going out through the woods and crashing through brush like we just did. And uh, we got this little mud here. It's not enough to worry about. I'm still in two-wheel drive. It's not going to do nothing with this Hummer. We're just like blast right through it. And so, yeah, so we don't know the history of dowsing, really, other than the fact that it dates back forever. You know, they were experimenting with dowsing, you know, back in the, uh, back around the turn of the century, you know, in uh, Christ's at time, back there in uh, Rome and in Greece, you know. And it, you know what's really funny is that here we hear about how the world was flat and everybody said it was flat up into the 1400s and stuff. 2,000 years ago, um, the Greek philosophers, they knew the planet was round. They had the, the star systems charted. And if you want, look on my, look on my playlist here on my channel and you can go down and look at ancient civilizations or ancient discoveries is a really good one. And it goes into all kinds of things that, that they have basically modern medicine like we have today, 2,000 years ago. They didn't have electricity or none of that to go with it. But they, uh, they had basically the same tools, the medical tools that, that we use today still for our operations. Those doctors back then had handmade for them. The only difference is they're a lot more um, beautiful, you know, and and like they would represent snakes or or animals or something, and they'd have it on there, and they would pray over their instruments before they actually did an operation because they wanted everything to be proper and everything to be taken care of when they went into this because they didn't they didn't have the antiseptics or you know the pads they had antiseptic but they didn't have the uh, the pads or any way to bring people back to life back then. I don't know if they knew CPR or anything or what. So, but they are making major surgery, like cataract surgery, where the, you actually go in when the cataract is still soft, and uh, and suck the cataract out from behind the lens of the eye. They actually have the same tool today, okay, in the same exact form they used over 2,000 years ago in Greece. Okay, and this was Galen, if you'd never heard of Galen, he was a... Uh, um, a like the, the the father of all medicine, basically, is what they say. Okay, and unfortunately, you know, on uh, after what 300 A.D. or more, the uh, when they started getting in and starting killing everybody, and you know, burning all the books and destroying the uh, library at Alexandria and everything, um, all this knowledge was lost, and it was lost for you know five six hundred years, you know. It was really a shame. Next thing you know, in the 1400s, Columbus is wanting to cross the ocean and thinking it's round, and, you know, he's getting persecuted because they're trying to tell him that the world's flat, and, you know, it's like, come on. When 500 years ago, before that, it had already been proven. They already had documents. They already had globes. They already had star charts, and they already had mechanical devices that I also have on here on my YouTube channel. That tells about the devices that they had to plot the stars and the sun and our days and everything. It's just really, really awesome. So we don't know the history of dowsing. We just know it goes back till the dawn of time. Okay, somebody grabbed a couple sticks and and did that, and uh, we went from there. Let's see how it is. We got somebody coming the other way. Hopefully, they can pull out of the way there.
one I actually almost might have done. Okay, we'll stand on top of something right here. I'll sit at a camera. You can see that as soon as I walk over the target, it turns straight over. Maybe back up and point straight again. So our first find of the day was pretty simple, just a buried hubcap, but it works just like a metal detector. That's all it is. You can go from any direction you want. When the rods cross in front of you, you're right over it. You can dig right there. Generally, I found it's good to go 90 degrees and walk that way over the top of it again, see if it crosses in the same spot. Just like with a metal detector, when you go ahead and you swing it one way and turn sideways and swing it the other. It's the same thing with the rods. It's just that easy to find stuff. If it's metal, you're going to find it. You can't go wrong. Let's go find some nuggets. Okay, basically we're here. I'm on this uh, clay, which is a false bedrock. And it's for these holes over here. Because what I've found is some of these holes have gold. The one you think would have gold would be upstream. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So we're going to dig that out. We'll try the detector and see how it works. It's pretty slippery down here, so I have chains on the bottom of my boots. It's like you have chains on your car. It's like I walk across here. Okay, I went ahead and I ran the detector for the dowsing rods across those holes over there and downstream and then back up in different holes. And there's one hole across the stream that I'm getting a signal out of. And uh, we'll dig it out and see if we get any gold out of that. So go ahead and turn the camera a little bit. I think it's a little bit off. It's just. Well, that's right there. It's right off the head of that rock. Well, there's that rock right there. Okay. Then we're going to dig that one out. We're going to dig out that hole. Put it in this pan and see if we get gold out of there. Like I said, I went up and down this creek in like a 10 foot area. And I went over the top of each hole that I knew I could get into, which are the shallow ones today. And, uh, the other ones came up empty. A little bit of a signal out of one of those smaller ones. But you never know. When you're dousing, you just kind of got to go with what you feel. In that big hole, there's definitely something in there. I don't know if it's gold. Could be a bolt. I have no idea. We're going to find out. Small shovel, figured I'd be in a small hole. So I just bought this, so I figured I'm going down small holes 
And then of course I end up with a small shovel and an 18 inch hole. There, that hole. Bring all the hole we got. There's nothing else in some hole in this hole because I trust what I got here. Let's move it one more time. I know what I got in the pan is what we got. Get it set up where you can see it. We got a, it's not gold, it's a copper nugget. But you know what? That's how it goes sometimes. You're gonna get copper, you're gonna get gold. I got gold too, a nice little chunk, but it's, uh, it was that piece of copper. And it's uh, been really worn because the rocks in those holes, they'll spin around and usually grind all the gold down. But I go through these holes every now and again, so what gets dropped into the holes are usually pretty new. Uh, I went through some of this crack here behind me, uh, I don't know, a good number of years ago. I've never been through those holes on the other side yet. So you can see the copper piece we got in there, a little nugget next to it. There's some fines up there too. They're hard to see in the pan, probably can't see them. But that's what it was signaling off of was that piece of copper right there. Well. This place is known for copper. 
and you never know what you're going to get. I mean, it's California. So that's what we got right there. signal out of this hole. Real good signal. I mean, that signal is not something, I mean, you get a metal detector, that's one thing. You get one with a set of these, you can't go wrong, you know, with either of them. It was a success. We found copper. Not a whole lot of gold, but you know what? That little nugget, that's, that'll add to the collection. And that's, uh, dowsing you know it's just that simple um, like I said not everybody can do it according to what I've read either you can and you get good signals like I do or you can't so you might as well just forget it and go buy a metal detector and it'll work fine so that's it for dowsing the other thing I got is uh, this tube unfortunately Pioneer Mining's out of business but uh, it's got the magnified end on it so when I stick it in the water you can see down through here, it's hard, oh, no, 12 inches long or 14 or whatever. Because when I'm cleaning out holes like that, I've found nice little half inch nuggets in a hole just like this right upstream from here, just like 30 feet upstream. So the nuggets are here. We know they're here. Um, there's a lot of nice nuggets here. And the, thing, the other thing is, there's so much black sand that it makes it really hard to work. Uh, when I tried dredging down here, there was so much garnet, so much black sand, magnetite, that you almost couldn't run. You had to clean your box out every hour because it was totally packed full of magnetite back in the dredging days in California. Well, this is it now. I got my tube, I got my dowsing rods, I got my loose box, I got my super sucker, you know, and I got my boom box. And I'm not talking about a stereo. I got my six inch boom box, I got my four inch boom box. That has a six inch suction nozzle on it. My four inch has the four inch. Basically it's just my pro line dredges converted to boom boxes for booming. I'll call them boom boxes, but we're going booming. And you'll be getting videos of that a little bit later on in the year when we can get down to that spot. And we'll see what kind of go we get with that. So we'll go up there, we'll do that pan right now. And let's see how it goes. It'll be extreme panning more or less, because I'm gonna hit this hole upstream and see what we get. I got a real good signal off of it. And uh, I'm gonna get my other shovel because it's too big to deal with this little tiny uh, crack shovel that I brought down. Okay, well here's our pan. Unfortunately, I got halfway done with it, or just started on it, and I looked up and realized I didn't have it on record. So, let's start over. Got a little bit back in here still. Basically, we're just taking the stuff off the top for you guys. We're just learning. Shake it down. And watch for gold going over the top, because that's one thing you want to do, these big old rocks, just pull them out of here and toss them.
Oh, we got gold in there. A little flash in the pan right there. Oh, look at that. There's a nugget for you. How's that for a day? A little more gold in there, it looks like. Keep panning this down, that's a good pan. And that's California gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you want to see it again? For all you guys down there? Check that out, huh? Yeah, it's some of my gold. I threw it in here just to play around. You know, some of the gold I got. This one here was an old Yuba River slug, the big one. And uh, hey, you know what? That's gold mining with Reed Lucas today. We're out here doing our uh, dousing. And, well, you know what? We found gold. We found copper. That's the most important part. Then I had to do this like, little extreme pan here for you guys. Well, that's a clunker there. These other ones are clunkers too. Yeah, nice little nuggets. Got over the years, different places. This one here actually was grandpa's. So what I got on is chains on my shoes. Like I said, for walking down there on that slick clay. Or, you know, up here walking in the ice. That's all they are. It says they're chains for your shoes. Just like chains for your car, but it fits right over the toe of your shoe. And it works really good when you're working down here in a slick creek like I am. I couldn't have walked on that clay, that slick snot clay, without these on today. So they make a big difference. I wear them when I'm walking on ice too. But uh, yeah, I thought you guys would like to see these as well. And hey, you know what? You know how it is. You like this video? Hit the like button. And uh, all kidding aside, uh, we did find copper. We did find gold in that first pan. This one here, I just did through that in there as kind of a joke to show you guys. But you know, a nice pan of gold will do to a man because you know exactly how you felt when you saw that first nugget pop out of there. I mean, your heart started racing. You know, your eyes got bigger. You started breathing heavy. You have a good one. <laughs> so here's the chains. You go on your shoes. One last look at the little babies. Right there. All right. That big boy don't want to stay up in the corner, does it? Keep my finger on it, keep him sliding. We got this little baby down here too. Yes, sir.